Here's a collection of measuring devices which I've picked up over many, many years. I started off obviously with the sensible ones, which is a ruler and a steel rule and a soft tape for measuring the body and a carpenter's rule, which is, is a folding ruler, of course, uh, and calipers for measuring diameters. Well, those are the beginnings of it, but then all the rest is variations, some of them quite sensible and others very silly and jokey, but all fun. Even these rulers here are not entirely sensible because this, for instance, can be turned into a bull roarer, one of the oldest noise instruments in the world, I think. You just take the ruler, drill a little hole in it, put a bit of string in it, wind it round and then whirl it round your head. And what a noise. He winds up as hard as he can and then it starts reversing the other direction and roars again. And if you have a much bigger ruler, it'll make a much deeper sound and a much smaller ruler will make a a much higher sound, extraordinary. And I put two together, which is a bit of fun too. So the ruler has variations for the bull roar. Then a variation of the steel tape. I've got many of them, but I'll just show the first one. This would be a diameter tape. This shows what the diameter is of a round object. So if I take, for instance, a pipe, it's used obviously by, by um, plumbers. If I go around the outside like this, and against the one there, oops, down here, we've got a reading of about just a bit, little bit over five inches, 5.2 inches. And then we can confirm that by ruling it across the top, turn the tape, tape over. And when you turn it over, you've got normal inches. And that's a little bit over five inches, uh, the diameter. So if the pipe is a big one, you know, a mains water pipe, and you can't get to the end of measure across, you just go around the diameter. And each of these inches here are long inches. They're all pi times the inch, 22 points over seven, three, three and a half inches, almost 3.1 inches each inch. So a diameter tape. A variation of this, of this cloth tape is this one here, which is it, on one side it's got normal uh, measurements. On the other side, it's got a lovely little summation of styles, of fashions from the first one, which is 1700. And then roughly every decade, they show how the fashions have been changing style of people's clothes over the next two centuries, all the way up to about 1990. So it is a soft tape. It can be used for, for measuring waist and arms and things for clothes. But in addition to that, it's a little kind of a dictionary showing the different fashions over the years. Then another variation, this one here, it's, it is a carpenter's tape, but <laughs> it was actually produced in the year 2000 and it was a history of the world in the last 2,000 years. This is the very earliest version of the very earliest dates, for instance, go back to the beginning of the first millennium, and it goes right the way through to the year 2000, showing major events that occurred. And on the back, it does a summation of arts and politics and other battlefields and so on. So it's quite a little encyclopedia within, a, within an ordinary, what is it really a carpenter's rule, but it's also a lovely summation of history. history. I don't have any variations on the calipers. That's the only one I don't have variations to, so we'll put them on the side. But these other ones have all got other variations. So I'll go back to the beginning, which is the ordinary rule. And here's a bit of fun. This is a foot of chocolate. That's quite nice, isn't it? I haven't eaten it yet, but it's quite a nice idea. It shows how many bites you've had or how far you've eaten into it. And this one was one of the earliest novelties I picked up. It's called a foot rule because most rulers are a foot long. So this is called a foot rule. It's shaped like a foot. And this one, to give the metric size, was called a centipede. That's a sweet idea. This came out in Carnaby Street, I think, in the 1960s, and I found it in 1970. Then another variation are these wonderful lenticular rulers in which you twist them back and forward like that and you get changes of the pictures. But notice also, especially in this bottom one here, you're actually getting quite a sensible thing. It's giving you metric and then imperial, imperial and then metric variations as you're rocking it back and forward. So you can instantly switch from one measurement base to the other. I think that's a, that's a nice idea. And a friend of mine, Rufus Butler Setter, makes wonderful rulers. This one here is showing his wonderful, I'm going to get the right background, it'll perform better, I think. His animation, he's called it a scanimation ruler, but you can use it also as a normal sensible ruler. And this bizarre one here is a musical instrument. The inventor of this insists you put it on the end of a table, put your fingers down there, and then looking at the, the marks here, which is the, uh, uh, the uh, musical scale, it'll show you roughly what note you're playing. 
the higher the note, the shorter the scale, the shorter the piece of wood that's vibrating. I haven't yet got to learn the rhythm, but there is a, obviously a, there's a, I think there's a website to get it into and you'll learn how to play proper music with the musical ruler. Now variations on the tape, we've seen the first one. Here's a very nice idea which came out in 1976. I wish they'd remake this again. It's called a bi-stable. It's a yard long, three foot long tape, and when you click the ends, it becomes completely rigid. When you squeeze in the centre, it curls up again. That was 1976, and 20 years later, some genius in the toy world came out with a wonderful thing which has never disappeared from the toy shops ever since, called the wrist snapper. This one here, which, in fact, they've gone back to the original use of this, which is turning it into a little measuring device, a ruler. But it was typically whatever the message was, and it went round your wrists. There you go, my, my wrist, and it goes like that, and it's a wrist snapper. But the original version was a tape measure, like this, and very, very sensible and useful too. Another rather dangerous one, this, I think I got it from Morocco or somewhere, because very sharp edges, very curious one, it does come out when you push this, and you can take the entire tape out and use it for measuring things, and then somehow stuff it back in again, but it's very awkward, very sharp, very ultra, and it's got a certain spring to it as well. I find it a little bit dangerous, and I've never actually tried using it, because it's a little bit too sharp on the edges there, a strange one that. Much more sophisticated, it's a wonderful one, this, it's motorised. When you press it, up in the air, and it will actually spring back again. If I do an action like this, and then push the thing at the back, it will spring back like that. And if I do it towards the camera, wow! And it goes a heck of a long way, see? Highly sophisticated. There's a curious one here which is made of sticky plastic which you have to put on to works that you're, that you're doing in the workshop. So it instantly gives you a measurement and, and keeps it there for the, for the duration of your, of your working on the piece of wood, whatever it is. You don't need to have a ruler there resting all the time, you just put this tape on it and spread it on and it stays there. One of the most bizarre uses I've ever come across of this steel tape is this one here. It looks for all the world like a steel tape, but this came from a toy shop. And we look at the front you say, what's going on here? There's no calibration on it whatsoever. I find it very hard to guess what this is for. It's actually a one-dimensional sticker album for children. If they buy stamps or stickers, they normally put them in an album with columns and rows and columns, but this one is a one-dimensional one. So here's some stickers. They're a bit too big to go in, so I've cut them down. So I'm now going to put on a little, little smiley face at the first of my sticker collection. There we are the first one I've put on, and I'll put another one on the second one. And then the idea is for kids to be able to have an entire collection of stickers in their album, and then pass it around with their friends and swap and play with them. I've got a few more to go yet. A sticker album in one dimension. Very bizarre. Equally bizarre is this one here, which is an edible tape measure, would you believe? This is about three foot long of gum, you can chew it. But in addition to that, you've got this little device here which will imprint on it, just by squeezing onto it, emboss it with either words, so you can eat your own words if you want to make a message, or you can put one inch, two inch, three inches, and then see how many inches you eat in the day. So, a very bizarre idea. It's nearly sensible, but a bit of fun. So those are variations on the steel tapes. Variation on the cloth tape, which is, I think, my all-time favourite of this collection, is this one here called the Optimist Tape Measure, produced by lovely company called Bear, Bear and Bear, and it's flexible. <laughs> so when I put it around my fat waist, I find I'm a sylph like 38 inches only around the waist. Wonderful. But of course, it's flexible, so what the... Lovely idea, then. Now, variations on the yard, on the rulers of the folding tape, this one here, which came out very recently, is a very nicely made version of a folding measure of ruler and it folds like this and then friends of mine point out all sorts of interesting puzzles and things they can make with it and it opens up like this and is it's functional but it's got a lot of promise to that i've got to work on certain sort of puzzles you can create with that another one which is very bizarre because this is based exactly on the carpenter's on the carpenter's rule yet it's not a carpenter's rule it's actually meant for children to play with and make it all sorts of letters of the alphabet in it let's try and make a letter a for instance come down here, like this, we come across here, and we come back to here, oops, Jersey, and we're going to come down here, oh, and push that one back again, 
and we just about get a letter A. Well, try to come a bit further down. I'm going to make a letter R instead, I think. I'll try the other one another time. It makes all the letters of the alphabet, and it's using the same mechanism as, as the carpenter's rule. And I like the idea of taking a sensible tool and then turning it into a toy. Variations also occur slightly outside this field where, for instance, you can have a three-mile pencil, the idea being that every pencil, before it runs up, out of lead will go about three or four miles, I think it is, and a biro does the same thing. Well, this one you actually can do a sort of writing performance to measure how far you've written that morning. You can say, ooh, not 3,000 word essay, you can say I've written half a mile today. This one is a quite sensible one from Japan, and it's a rolling ruler in which this one here calibrates as it rolls across the table, the bit of paper, it, it shows the distance you're travelling in this direction here when you, when you roll it. Okay, we'll do it like more like this one. Going to do it lightly. So you can do measurements across here, and you can also do measurements from this line, which calibrates it at right angles to it, which I think is a very sensible idea. And then they can add measurements to, for instance, this is a pair of help scissors, but they've given a little bit of calibration here to show what the dimensions are if you're looking at very small distances. And there's two that I've so far escaped from, uh, from my collection. One is this extraordinary one, which came out in, I thought it was found in Indian Bazaar, but uh, perhaps Italian. But anyway, it's, it's meant for tailors, to perhaps to measure the arm, the curvature of the arm when they're make, making clothes for people. Very, very strange. And one which I've, uh, I have never seen this one, what I have seen, and I saw it in MoMA, art in the design shop in New York, was called the Lucky Ruler. I'm sorry I didn't get it. It was 16 inches long, well, 16 inches in calibration, but 15 inches actually long, called a lucky ruler because they left the 13 out, of course. 10 inches, 11, 12 inches, 14 inches, 15 inches. It's like leaving out the number 13 on a floor of a hotel. Lovely idea. So, look out for strange rulers. I'm sure you'll find them as well as using them as sensible instruments. But there's a lot of interesting things out there. <laughs>